the last gentleman just spoke about waste at Repta. I'm here to tell you again, in my capacity as the chief executive officer, that is not true. Uh, our, our challenge is because of the structural deficiencies that existed in the way we are funded. Having said that, we still took on the challenge of trying to fix what people perceive to be a problem within the organization. And let me just highlight some of the stuff that we've done internally, and these are, were very painful, and I repeat, very painful process because we had to make those tough choices that created so much conflict within the organization and dropped morale. We've reduced our staff overall by about 3%. On the administrative staff, is close to 10%. Uh, and, and this is as we speak. And, and that process is, continued, is, is ongoing. We've worked diligently with staff to look at every aspect of what we do, from how many vehicles we have on board, how many copiers we have in the office. We've taken a look at all of those things and have worked to reduce them just in an effort to save, uh, to reduce our costs. What has that done for RIPTA? That's the reason why RIPTA, RIPTA was able for the last fiscal year to close our deficit gap. We did close it on our own without help from anybody. For this particular fiscal year, we took a $4.6 million deficit and we dropped it to $1.9 million. And I do believe that my staff needs to be commended for embracing this particular project despite uh, all of the uh, conflict and acrimony that it created. From a capacity perspective, we talk about DOT and we talk about RIPTA. RIPTA actually helps DOT in terms of capacity on the streets. As we speak, ridership is about 11%. It's gone up about 11%, which means by the end of this fiscal year, you're looking at 20 million rides. Imagine, just imagine for one second what the streets would look like if we infused 20 million rides back on your roadway. That's what needs to be funded. What needs to be funded is that capacity that we offer to DOT and the local roadways by taking some of those rides away from DOT. Also, of all of these, uh, our current 18 million rides from the last fiscal year, 12 million rides are for trips to work and back. These individuals are related to each and every one of you. What will happen to these individuals if all of a sudden 12 million individuals have nowhere to get to work? So I'm here to ask you, from a rider perspective, from a roadway capacity perspective, because you guys are all aware of, our, of the uh, state of our roadways, this bill needs your support. This bill needs your support. This, the, 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 the structural issues that Repta has been dealing with needs to be corrected. And also, uh, my board chair, who's the mayor, uh, Mayor Vedasian of Warwick, uh, did send a letter. He was supposed to be here, but due to uh, an emergency, he, uh, he couldn't be here today. He sends his, uh, his uh, regrets and then had a letter uh, for the board, so uh, uh, for the committee. So I, I truly, truly ask this committee to please support your great bill because Raptor at this point does need the help to continue to be one of the ca economic catalysts for the state of Rhode Island. Thank you, Mr. Dillman. Representative O'Grady, thank you for putting this bill in. As you know, this committee has heard, um, not only have we heard the, um, the, the, uh, the RIPTA's uh, budget uh, before this committee, but also some budget articles concerning RIPTA, and uh, we thank Mr. Demway for the work that he's done and all of the, your RIPTA employees uh, to try to close that deficit. And uh, uh, Representative, uh, you've identified some sources of funding, and we appreciate your work on, on this also. Just say that because I want everybody to understand in the audience that we understand what the problems are. This committee has heard testimony not only last year, uh, this year, but last year on the problems that RIPTA has. We appreciate what RIPTA does, the, the impact and the importance that RIPTA has in the community. So I know people are kind of come to testify to tell us that. We get it. We know that. It's just that at this point in time, we need to, we need to identify sources of funding, and uh, Representative Grady has uh, prov uh, provided some sources of funding, and we appreciate that. So thank you very much. Any other questions of uh, the, the panel? Thank you. We appreciate your testimony. I'd like to call uh, George Nee, Dan Bowden, and Deanna Casey.
It doesn't matter which order you go in, if you just want to.